being principal of, uh, of Teddy Hall, uh, my laboratory is at the Dunn School of Pathology. I'm an infectious disease microbiologist, so don't worry the people around. I always wash my hands, both before and after. <laughs> so I'm perfectly safe. Um, and I also work on an African disease, so uh, you're, pretty, you're pretty safe here. Uh, well, I wanted to start off just for a few moments and thank uh, uh, Timothy and, and Claire for really this occasion because I think uh, to them uh, is due the sort of sense of bringing us all together to celebrate this, uh, this great institution. So thank you very much indeed. Yeah. And I know that represented today here, there will be people who've done some of the heavy lifting um, in the organization. Uh, people who do the organization and the choosing of the scholars um, and of course the benefactors so thank you to those and of course congratulations to the scholars who are here because you've endured the rigors of assessment and come out with some fantastic scholarships um, and I think the organization should be very proud of you certainly we in the University of Oxford are very proud of you and there's representatives of other colleges here very clearly today now, as a scientist, I know very much the connection with China. Um, I'm a fellow of the Royal Society, and the Royal Society, which was formed in 1660, um, had a long and very, uh, has had a very long connection with China. Early on, at some of the very earliest meetings, the reports from the East India Company and the Dutch East India Company came in of, of these rather interesting practices um, and there are some interesting debates that you can read in the archives of the Royal Society on things like acupuncture, which were led to really hugely animated discussions of how on earth that might actually operate. Um, if we look, though, further on, you can see, and I was talking to Claire just a few moments ago, that even this garden has been involved in this process. Of course, out of China, one of the great aspects of science in the last uh, 30, 40 years has been anti-malarial drugs from wormwall and artemisinin. And now <coughs> that was a, a drug not known about in, uh, in, in uh, most of the world until China emerged onto the world stage and the economic development brought an openness where again science was reconnected. And in that in that uh, late 1970s period, then the publications in China on the marvelous properties of this drug from which had been known in China for 2,000 years became apparent. Um, and that's now become one of the most important treatments of malaria. So as a tropical uh, medicine person myself, you can see immediately this connection of globalization um, and, the, and the great benefits of connectivity between these, the, these, uh, these groupings. Now, uh, St. Edmund Hall has the same proportions in some ways as the university of students. Chinese students in the University of Oxford now are only second to American students as, uh, as the proportion of the international student uh, uh, group. Interesting, the proportions are rather different. There's many more undergraduates Chinese than there are um, <coughs> Americans, but huge numbers also, nearly 350 postgraduate students, taught postgraduate students from China and postgraduate research students, so nearly a thousand Chinese students in Oxford. It's a really increasing and very welcome part of the connection with China, and of course supported as we've seen by the fellowships today. Now my college's connection with China, I found out over the last five years I've been principal, go back a very long way. In fact, our library, which was built in 1680, has books in it from even before then, when the college existed, it's been there for 700 years, but there was a library before the main building was built. We have in that <coughs> first editions from China um, of books such as Alvero Samida's The History of the Great and Renowned Monarchy of China, first edition given to the college, 1655. And Gabriel Magellan's A New History of China, the first edition 
to the college in 1688. I wondered what the old history of China was. <laughs> but I haven't found that volume. But I have to say that the new volume, which has maps of Peking and maps of China, are really rather interesting. And I spoke the other, uh, uh, about three weeks ago, gathered all of our Chinese students together and, and showed them these books. Um, the first Chinese students came to Oxford um, <coughs> at the end of, uh, <coughs> one likes to say that, or, or falls into the habit of saying the last century, but in fact the century before the last, in the late uh, 1900s. Um, and in, in 1927, though, our first students came. Um, there was a very remarkable um, letter uh, that I found uh, uh, from our first Chinese student, who was a, a Chinese student, uh, Li Fu Shen. And Li Fu Shen read law at the P at Peking University and then did graduate studies in the University of Tokyo. And when you look at the letter, and I managed to, I pulled out a copy of uh, the letter. Of course, it's always frightening to students for them to learn that virtually, I, I surmise other colleges are the same as ours, we have every record of every student who ever attended. <laughs> <laughs> Along with your battles bills and so on, for the things that you did not pay your... <laughs> and so here, 19th of October, so he was recommended from somebody um, in, uh, to come to Oxford, to come to St. Edmund Hall, um, and then he travelled from Japan through Siberia <laughs> to Europe and arrived in Oxford. But there's a lovely phrase in his letter which says, <clears throat> I, I told him, that's somebody who was interviewing, that I came to Oxford for knowledge. But if I had wanted a degree, I should have just gone to another country. <laughs> so let me say, there may be universities in the world, and they give you degrees, but Oxford gives you knowledge. And I think that, from a letter in 1927, is a rise. So let me just finish by saying that the hall is very much focused on China. We have tremendous uh, emeritus professor, John Knight, a world expert on the Chinese economy. Uh, Linda Yu, one of our uh, fellows, has recently gone off for a little period of time to become the chief uh, business correspondent of the BBC. And you'll see Linda or here on, B on, on Radio 4 and see her on many programs again and therefore our interest has been very much recently in the economics of China. Uh, with a Chinese economy program of lectures and visits we've built those connections with universities. I've made three or four trips to China in the past for four years and I've been principal. Um, we're forming relationships with uh, Chinese universities, um, uh, summer students coming, visiting students and of course students uh, coming from uh, organizations funded like the, uh, the organization that we're celebrating today. Um, so I think we'll continue to build uh, the links. Thank you very much for what uh, uh, this scholarship program has done for the students at uh, St. Edmund Hall. Um, and congratulations, of course, to the scholars. The world comes to Oxford, um, and long may it be so, and we're welcoming more and more students and of course the scholars today, funded by this scholarship, uh, are the pinnacle of those individuals, but they probably haven't, unlike my first student, Li Fu Shen, actually had to suffer the rigors of Siberia to get here. But anyway, welcome and thank you very much indeed.